I'm probably going to lose it, so uh, <laughs> bear with me. Um, kind of might touch on a few things that Paulie did or Shane did, but here goes. Jonathan Ray, or Pops, as he came to be known as, he was 50 years old when he passed. He survived by his wife and my mother, Mary Ray, by his three daughters, Darlene, Gabrielle, and Samantha, me and his grandson, Tristan Jonathan. He was a real estate appraiser who built his own company with my mother, and they ran it successfully for many years. He was born in Massachusetts and raised by his parents, Ronald and Carol Perry. He often told his kids stories of times he'd be running from the police on dirt bikes or, or fighting someone for stealing uh, silverware from his grandmother. He used to tell me a lot of stories about beating up people. And I love them. He uh, would tell me stories about hanging out at Meadowbrook Pond. As he got older, he realized he wanted to escape the cold in New England and headed for warmth of Florida. My father took a job as a chef and came to meet my cousin, Polly, who eventually introduced him to my mother. At the, at the time, my mother had a four-year-old in Darlene and an adorable 18-month-old, which is me. <laughs> and, uh, though he initially was unsure, he eventually decided to take a leap of faith and build something special with my mom. Mom and Dad moved. From the St. Pete area to Spring Hill in 1989. Back then, Spring Hill Drive was just two lanes. Anderson Snow Road was a dirt road. And there was nothing really going on here. There still isn't. <laughs> we didn't have much, but we had each other. He raised us in that wooden house that many of my friends have gotten to know on Godfrey Avenue. At the time, the garage wasn't converted. In fact, it wasn't even attached. And we doubled up. I mean, I, I lived with my sister Darlene in a room. Samantha and Gabby shared a room. And for many years, actually, my grandmother shared a room with Darlene and I. My parents lived upstairs in the loft. Didn't have much privacy, no wall, no door, but we made it work. It was cramped, but our house was full of love. I'm not sure why, but every time we'd see our parents kissing in the kitchen, me and my siblings would always yell, there's no kissing in the kitchen. <laughs> it was stupid, but it always gave us a laugh. One of my favorite childhood memories was right before bedtime, my parents would come walking over to us, and in this really excited voice, they'd yell, it's bedtime. <laughs> and it was, a, it was a really fun way of getting us to go to sleep. That's something, about, something I miss most about my childhood. And I think the excitement that was in their voice was to finally get us to go to sleep so they can have some alone time. As we got older, we went on family trips and always had the best time. We got into our own hobbies and extracurricular activities and my father would take them up as his own. He would, he would he'd always be our, our biggest fan and, and put forth this passion that we never knew about. As we got into adulthood, if any of us needed anything, he would drop whatever he was doing and make sure our needs were all taken care of. It didn't matter if one of us was moving, if our vehicle was breaking down, if one of us was sick, if I needed to play basketball, he was always there for us. He was always there for our friends as well. He was closest with his best friend Shane and our cousin Polly, and most recently became very close with our friend George, George Woodward. My dad cherished friendships and people. He was selfless, hysterically funny, adventurous. Hard work, I guess. Oh, I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> and he was so full of love. He was like, oh, shit. <laughs> He was my father and my best friend. And I'm so very thankful that he took that leap of faith and found his forever person in my life. 